when we're trying to present science using a word processor and a computer, a lot of the things that we try to present aren't always that easy to format well if we just use you know, the typical space bar and arrows and move things around. So there are a couple of tools that are available to us that can make some of our presentations look a lot better. One of the things that you probably already have run into and that can be a real hassle to make look good are chemical equations, maybe more specifically mathematical equations. So to help us format those in a way that looks a little bit better and is a little bit clearer, let's take a look at some tools that are available inside Microsoft Word that will help us do that. So here we see something that you might want to type up in a report you're doing and something you're doing. And you can see that, well, it's not so bad that the equation, chemical equation, doesn't look too great. But when we get down to this mathematical equation, this is all correct. And there are all correct parentheses all the way through here, but it's almost impossible to see what this really looks like. This, this really just looks bad. It's hard to follow. So let's correct a few of these things. First of all, let's go up here to this equation and let's center that. That sets it off, makes it a little easier to see. Something like subscripts would really make this a lot more clear. Great, so that's already looking better. The equation for producing water from hydrogen and oxygen. So the grams of water that can be produced, blah blah, there's the, there's the setup. And what about this equation? Well, there are a couple ways we can do this. First of all, I think I'm going to want to set this off as a centered item. So if we go to insert object, one of the things that pretty much every version of Microsoft Word has somewhere in it is this Microsoft Equation 3.0. So if I insert that, keep an eye on what goes on on the, on the headers and the menus when I click. My menus just got way simpler, and I got this extra little floating menu bar as well. So here are most of the same functions that you saw in the other form. The things that we're going to use the most, let's start building this equation. So I want to put in a pair of parentheses and let me say that this is x grams of h. If I want to do a subscript, now see I can do superscript, subscript, both at the same time. Superscript in front, subscript in front, both at the same time. I can do overs and unders. So there are a lot of nice features here. I just need a subscript for now h2 and let me specify that that's a gas move on to my next term now here's where this is gonna get a lot prettier to look at so this is a fraction in this next term oh and I just popped out so let me get back in there if you get out of the equation editor, you just double click on it and you get back in. So this term is a big fraction. So let's go ahead and make that a big fraction. And you see the nice part there was the brackets adjusted so that the brackets actually bracket what's inside of them. So now we've got one mole of H to gas and actually, I could use keyboard parentheses for that gas notation. Over 2.016 grams H2 gas. Now, the nice thing that I like about this equation editor is I can go in afterwards and I can come up here and say, make that a subscript. It's a little easier make that a subscript. So there we go and I can continue doing this. I can build the rest of my 
equation the same way. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. All right, one of the other things you may have noticed as, as I was typing this along is, first of all, everything's in italics, and second of all, it didn't put any spaces in where I wanted it to put spaces in. That's because this program and, and this little add-in is designed to do math. So it always assumes that everything that you're putting in is math. You don't put spaces in math very often. So to get around that, you can select the whole thing. If you go up to the style menu up here, and let's just tell it that this is text. You see everything is now unitalicized. I've got a funny little shadow there, but that's really not anything that important. Now I can go in and it lets me put spaces in because text has spaces in it. So let's throw in the appropriate spaces and it looks like I need to format a few of those subscripts. Space, subscript, space, subscript. Okay, almost done. Space and subscript. So now I've got a little bit prettier format and a little bit clearer format, actually a lot clearer format compared to what you saw up here. The other nice thing about this is, you see I set this up as a variable equation. However many grams of hydrogen I burn to make this water, I get some number of grams out. It's nice to set equations up this way when you're doing a problem because it shows explicitly what this equation looks like in general terms and then plug in numbers for the specific term. The nice thing about doing this is when I plug that number in, I don't have to reproduce this whole thing. So let me click out of there. You see I went back to my regular menus, my regular title bars, and if I just click on that once, I can select that object, and if I copy that and paste that, I get the exact same thing out. Now if I go in here, I can double click that, it brings back up my equation editor, and I can plug in 8.192 grams. Now, this doesn't do the math for you, so let me plug those numbers into my just handheld calculator here. 8.192, 0.016, 18 18.015. This gives me 73. Point to zero and let's see I've got four sig figs here four sig figs here five sig figs here so my number should have four sig figs my result should have four sig figs and I just finished that equation so there are a bunch of different little options within that equation editor some of them you'll use some of them you'll probably never use but the power of it, the really nice thing about it is instead of having an almost impossible to decipher line equation like this, we get something that's a lot clearer, a lot easier to see, and really ma just makes a lot more sense when we're trying to read it. Well that was a little bit of an introduction of some of the things that can be done using the equation editor in Microsoft Word. It's certainly not exhaustive, and there may be some things that you stumble across that are a little bit more useful for exactly what you're trying to do than some of the things that I just showed you. As with everything, practice helps. So the more often you use it, the quicker you'll be able to use it, the more comfortable you'll be with using it. So whenever you have anything that could well benefit from a little bit of mathematical formatting, give that equation editor a try and see what kind of things you can get it to do for you. Good luck.